then it's uh, be back here in San Antonio after a long while. And uh, today the feast of St. Hippolytus and uh, Cassianus. But uh, St. Hippolytus was a, a, uh, one of the converts of St. Lawrence. St. Hippolytus was a Roman soldier and uh, Lawrence converted him. And Hippolytus watched his family be killed by the Emperor Decius and then he himself was slain. And then uh, also today is the, the uh, who was a new convert, today is also the feast of St. Cassianus. And Cassianus was a teacher. And Cassianus was found out to be a, a Catholic, a, 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 a follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was denounced to the Roman authorities by the boys in his classroom. And then the Roman soldiers, the Roman magistrate, said since you were found guilty by the very boys you were teaching, he commanded the boys to kill him. And the boys of his class, maybe eight years old, seven years old, little boys, they took the pens, the little metal pens that they used for writing, and they stabbed him and beat him, and it took a very long time to kill him because of the weakness of the boys. And so the Martyrology tells us the frailty of the boys it took a very long time for them to mock and to cut and to kill Cassianus. They killed their teacher because he was a teacher that taught the faith. And they did not want to hear the faith. And therefore the commander of the Romans told them, let the students kill the master. Let the students put to death the teacher. And though he was put to death by his own students, who killed him with the pens that were used in the classroom. We could perhaps be a patron of the modern teachers today in those modern classrooms where the kids are like the devils that were there. And the time may come again when the students are going to kill the, the master. But today, can you give me the papers over there? But today, a few considerations, a little on the continuing doctrinal slide of the Society of St. Pius X. now 2013, 2012, there came out in the open, came out in the open that Vatican II is, as Bishop Fillet told us in the famous interview of May of last year to the Catholic News Service, to the newspapers and to the, to the, uh, the largest Catholic News Service video uh, in America, he told them, well, Vatican II, we learned during the doctrinal talks that many of those things that we thought were errors of the Council were in fact not errors of the Council, but rather the common interpretation of it. So the error was not in the Council. The error was afterwards. The error was in the bad interpretation, which of course is the common teaching of the, of the conservative Novus Ordo and the so-called quasi-traditional priests of the Attorney of St. Peter, the Institute of Christ the King, and the other adult communities down the last 40 years that there's no actual error in the council, but only a misinterpretation of the council in which the error is found, or bad influences that entered into the council and that were twisted in a wrong way. We've heard this many times. Very upset with the council because the council led to false the belief, but not the council was an error itself. Whereas we know the council was a heresy, in the council was a heresy of ecumenism, <laughs> in the Vatican Council too is a heresy of religious liberty. In the Vatican Council of Ecumenism is a heresy of the modern collegiality. And there is a many, many other examples of true teachings contrary to the 2,000 year teaching of our Catholic Church. But these specific ones are heresies contrary to the teaching of the Church. And the error is in the Council. The heresy is in the Council. The evil is in the Council. Not in the interpretation of the Council. The conservative Novus Ordo people, they say, we don't like the council because the council is dangerous, because the council leads to trouble, but not that the council is trouble itself. And so Father Chazelle and myself and there are many other priests pointed this out last year. How can Bishop Fillet be saying in an interview publicly in May of 2012 that there's no error in the council? And they said to us, well, this was only Bishop Fillet speaking to the American audience. That's what he told Father Giselle. I was speaking to the American audience. And the American audience loves religious liberty. 
And so when, he, when I said, says Father Bishop, Bishop Filet in the interview, the same CS, CNS interview, he says religious liberty <coughs> is very limited. It's a limited liberty. It's only limited. Not that this is a her heresy. Not that it is a wicked liberty. Man does not have the right to choose a false religion. Period. No limitations. He is an evil, it is an evil thing. But Bishop Vallejo says in the CNS interview of last year, he says, well, this liberty is very limited. It can be understood in the right sense, according to Bishop Vallejo. And then, in June of that year, last year, Father Hugo called up Bishop Vallejo on the 19th of June, and he asked him, he says, do you realize your recent articles, ones of Father Fluger, the ones of yourself, the CNS interview, your recent sermons are causing a great confusion amongst the faithful. And they are leading souls to believe that there is not grave error in the council. It's 95% okay. It can be interpreted in the right way. And this is a scandal to the sheep because it is leading the sheep astray. It is leading the sheep into the arms of the wolves, of these ravenous wolves, of these modernist bishops and the modernist pope who is there to destroy our Catholic faith. And Father Bishop Filet said, don't worry. At the general chapter next month, in the month of July 2012, everything will become clear. You will see the clarification of these questions. Father, Father, Father Tuvenal told Father Giselle that more than 50 letters of priests were sent to Menzingen at that time of last year. More than 50 letters saying, what's going on? Why are you changing the teaching? What's happening? We want to maintain the traditional teaching of the Catholic faith which was promoted by Archbishop Sister Marcel Lefebvre and which you are supposed to be standing up and defending clearly and unequivocally as the superior of the Society of St. Pius X. And he said, don't worry. Everything will become clear at the general chapter. But then in the general chapter, there is a declaration made by the general chapter on July 14, 2012. And in that declaration, what is said? Vatican II remains tainted with errors. In other words, there's no error in the council. Confirming what he said in the CNS interview. It only remains tainted with errors. It's got the stain of errors remaining in it, but the error is gone. Like if you step into a vat of paint, you're in the paint. If you get out of the paint, you're no longer in the paint. But the taint of the paint remains because there's stain on your clothing. The taint of original sin remains. <laughs> When we are, when we uh, are baptized, original sin is removed, but the taint remains. How can you say it's tainted? Last year, I spent an hour, <coughs> approximately an hour, of a three-hour conversation with my superior in Asia, Father Couture, who was at the general chapter about that word "tainted." Then, how on earth can this chapter of forty priests of the Society of Saint Pius X? The superiors of the society. <coughs> How can they say that the council is only tainted with error? How can they say that? This is crazy. We know that it is heresy, it is error, and we know precisely what those errors are. And we have been discussing them for the last 40 years of our existence, and now all of a sudden we say it remains tainted with errors. And then they no longer talk about the, the double church. And then priests told us, well, these are only, it can be, this is only a weak document. <laughs> it's only a week. And when Bishop Filet says that the new Mass might be kind of okay, he doesn't really accept it. When he says Vatican II is 95% okay, he doesn't really accept it. He doesn't really and truly accept it. And besides, they're just interviews and they're just conversations. Several priests told me last year, show me the documentation. <coughs> show me the documentation that shows that there is an official change. Let me see the letterhead of Bishop Filet. Let me see the letterhead of Michigan, Menzingen. Let's see the official documents. And so we point out to them, look at this July 14th document. It's official. It says... That Vatican II is tainted with error, remains tainted with error, meaning there's no error in the council. That's official. 
and said, well, that's maybe how you interpret it, but let me see something more clear than that. So then, this year, April the 15th, 2012, document is released to the public. <coughs> it was written last year. In the April 15th declaration, signed by Bishop Fillet and sent to Rome, what does it say? The new Mass is legitimately promulgated. And there it is in writing, in an official document, in an official point, sent to Rome, signed by Bishop Fillet, as the official position of the Society of St. Pius X. It was republished in the March 2013 Carunum, which is our official bulletin of the Society of St. Pius X. And every priest of the Society gets this bulletin. And every priest of the Society is supposed to read it, especially in important matters. And there is found the April 15th Declaration, republished, the 2012 Declaration, republished, along with an explanatory note of Bishop Fillet, which is an official explanation. And then as an official explanation, he says, I said that the Vatican II New Mass was legitimately promulgated because that's what Archbishop of the Feb always believed. That was his explanation. He did not retract it. Furthermore, he said the falsehood that our sister Lefebvre always believed the new mass was legitimate. He called the new mass, our sister Lefebvre called the new mass a bastard mass. If we look up the word bastard in the dictionary, it's a bastard is an illegitimate child. Bastard means illegitimate. Illegitimate and legitimate are not the same thing. Illegitimate and legitimate are opposite things. And yet Archbishop Lefebvre, he said many times, it is a bastard right. It is a bastard mass. That is exactly what he called it, in those precise words, that there be no confusion what this new Mass is. <clears throat> then, Bishop Fillet says, in writing, it is a legitimately promulgated Mass. We then take this text, April 15th, and show it to the priest. You said you wanted an official document. You said last year, show me an official document. Show me a real teaching coming from Menzingen, and then I will believe. Now I show you the document, and you say, well, Rome didn't accept it. That means maybe Rome is Catholic. Because Rome did not accept this non-Catholic document. That's all that means. That Rome didn't accept it was a good thing. The problem is, we accept it. The problem is, we said it. The problem is, we declare that we believe it. And then they say, well actually, it's not a doctrinal statement, it's a prudential statement. Well, if it's a prudential statement, why is it entitled doctrinal declaration. Father Hugo speaking to eight priests, eight young priests at, at ordinations, he said he said it over like a hundred times. These eight priests told him on Friday after ordinations, which Father Hugo was not allowed to attend his, young, his nephew's ordination to the priesthood, but he was there in Winona at the time. So he saw these eight priests that night, eight young priests of the society, new priests, and they said it's not a doctrinal declaration, it's a prudential declaration. He says, well, why does it say doctrinal declaration? What part of doctrinal is prudential? He says, well, it's really prudential because it's not really... Well, why does it say doctrinal? It's a doctrinal declaration. What content in these 14 points of this doctrinal declaration, what content, what one of them is practical? We declare that we believe that's doctrine. We declare that we believe that they, the, we, accept the, we accept the council. We accept the, the, the teaching. We declare that we believe. No, no. <clears throat> and so the fact is that that we 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 this this doctrinal this doctrinal declaration is doctrinal and it's in writing and it officially says a new doctrine. Then some priests tell us we talk to them, the new mass is not legitimately promulgated, and I never believe it's legitimate. But not one priest told me that a few weeks ago. Other priests have told me, well the new mass is legitimately promulgated. <clears throat> They can't decide anymore. A priest in Germany told me he's not sure, Brother Jasny. He says, I'm not sure. We used to be sure. We used to study in the seminary that the new Mass is a bastard Mass. We used to study in the seminary the errors that are intrinsic in the Mass, the new Mass, and we used to study that even the canonical process by which the new Mass was formed was illegitimate. It did not fulfill even the canonical norms required to make a law a legitimate according to promulgation. 
It was not legitimately promulgated according to the law. It was not legitimately promulgated according to the purpose of the law. It was illegitimate in its purpose, immoral. It was illegitimate in the way in which it was promulgated. It did not follow the precepts of law. It was never fully and correctly implemented as a law. It fails in every single category of the word legitimate. It is illegitimate, illegitimate, and also illegitimate in every conceivable category. But now, Bishop Fillet says it's legitimately promulgated. He reiterates it. It is once again stated again in the June 27th document, the most recent one that came out from, from, from uh, Bishop Fillet and Bishop Tissier and Bishop de Galaretta. It says this promulgated document, it still admits that it is promulgated and legitimately promulgated. <clears throat> this legitimately promulgated. What are they saying now? Well, legitimately promulgated means that it was legitimately promulgated in a canonical sense because the Pope has the right to promulgate. But it doesn't mean that we like it or that it's good. Some priests have told me, I'm still against the adult mass. I still tell people not to go to the adult mass. And they shouldn't go. Other priests say they should. Other priests say, well, show me the document where the society is saying it's okay to go to the, to the, to the adult mass. Now we find in the, in the, in the, the, pastor's, the pastor's corner, July the 21st, 21st, 2013, in the pastor's corner, in the SSPX.org. Now okay to go to the to the adult masses. The motu proprio, so warm but difficult. Quoting here from the SSPX.org. The motu proprio, so warm but difficult, officially ended the canonical struggle over the traditional Roman mass. But is this the end of the fight for the mass of all time? This is stated on July the 21st. What happened in early July of 2013, this same year? In early July of this precise same year, 2013, only a month ago, Pope Francis commanded the, 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 um, uh, the, the, the Franciscans of the Immaculate on July the 9th, only a few days before this July 21st document, that they can no longer have the extraordinary Latin Mass and that they are forbidden to have this Mass unless they renew and get a permission to say it. That's from Rome. And yet, less than two weeks later, we find the Society of St. Pius X website tells us the canonical fight over the legitimacy of the, new, of the Latin Mass ended with Simorum Pontificum. That is false. That is a lie. Furthermore, the canonical fight did not finish from the very text itself because Pope Benedict XVI said very clearly, you cannot have your extraordinary mass, which is why it's called extraordinary, meaning given under conditions, unless you accept the ordinary mass, which is the Novus Ordo Nisei. Therefore, by going to the, to the indult mass, or rather the motu proprio mass, according to its new terminology, which is the same thing, by going to the motu proprio mass, you accept the new mass as legitimate. This is wrong. This is a, this is a wrong, strictly speaking, it's a sinful thing to do. You have no right to do that as a Catholic. You cannot go to a mass, which means by going to that mass, you accept a false mass. You accept an adulterous mass, a bastard mass, which is also called the new mass. And yet, and yet so more but difficult is very clear. You cannot have your Latin mass unless you accept the new mass. Furthermore, Sumor Medivicum says, you have permission to say this Latin Mass because I, Pope Benedict, am extending the permission that was given by Pope John Paul II. In other words, it's an extension of the endote. It is not a removal of the endote. It's an extension of it, making it more universal. This means it can be retracted. It can be withdrawn. Pope Francis withdraws it in the case of the Immaculate. The canonical struggle is nowhere near over. And that is completely false. The teaching of SSPX.org. And then it says also, Certainly we cannot counsel our faithful 
who regularly participate in the masses celebrated by priests of dubious doctrinal orthodoxy, even when offered reverentially, we must also warn them not to receive Holy Communion from a ciborium consecrated at the Novus Ordo Mise. For this is the sacrament of unity, and we cannot be in union with a theologically deficient rite. There is also a constant danger of strange confusion of rite and improper behavior, which is so common in the mainstream churches and the accompanying irreverent rites. For those, for these reasons and so many others, which you will easily discover even from occasional visits to your local motu proprio mass. So don't go. We don't recommend you go. But go ahead and make an occasional visit. What are these idiots saying? The guy who's writing this needs to be executed. For these reasons and so many others, which you shall easily discover even from occasional visits to your local motu proprio mass, or in talking with conciliar trads, why we think it is not advisable to regularly attend the extraordinary form SSPX using the terminology of the modernists. SSPX speaking, we do not advise you to regularly attend the extraordinary form offered by the diocese or under the aegis of the Ecclesia Dei Commission. After all, we have not been fighting for over 40 years against the modernist tsunami, only to be washed away by an ebb tide. Isn't that beautiful? So, we are, it now says, it is not advisable to regularly attend, but you can attend sometimes. How often is regular? You can attend sometimes. And why is it not advisable? It gives no essential reason why it's not advisable. Practically speaking, the bishops continue to limit the celebration of the traditional Mass by seeking to grant permission which is no longer necessary. Oftentimes, in addition to other arbitrary conditions, thus we pray that the Mass of all time may be given quickly to the monopoly. It should never have lost in the Latin Church. Nevertheless, we cannot but give a strong warning against the regular attendance of such vows and masses under the present circumstances. The truth is, thou shalt not go to the end of mass. Why? Because it's a compromise of faith. Period. End of question. But now, what do they say? We can't say that you should regularly attend. Because even though they're approved, and even though it's the Latin Mass, and even though it's good, um, they say the new mass also in those churches and they can you might get a saborium from the wrong mass and um, you might have a bad sermon and um, I don't recommend that you go but of course you can go and that is foolishness and false that is a prime example of a doctrinal slide Archers de Lefebvre said they have betrayed us they have betrayed us. They have betrayed us. He called them traitors of Catholic tradition. Those who shook hand with the modernists and accepted the Latin Mass under these false conditions. Now, 25 years later, the society says, well, you can go, but I don't recommend it. And they talk more and more with these, with these priests. This is an official new position of the society concerning the end old Mass very similar to the new position of the Society of the Garden of Vatican II, which is enunciated in the June 27th document. Vatican II leads to problems. Vatican II kills missionary spirit. Vatican II is dangerous. But Vatican II is essentially good. Vatican II is essentially correct. It is only dangerous, so you've got to be careful. Now, if you only have to be careful, you have no right to stay away since the Pope wants you to accept it. If you only have to be careful, you have no right to stay away from the new Mass. Go to the Mass, the new Mass, sit behind a column, and say your rosary. And there you are. You are careful at the new Mass. That is the answer of the modernists. That is not the correct way. We cannot allow ourselves to accept this new Mass because it is an adultery against the faith. The new Mass is not legitimate. The end old Mass is also not legitimate because that is a Mass that is given 
under the pretext of the legitimacy of an adulterous mass. And it is a mass given under the pretext that you have no right to go there except by the special permission. The doctrinal slide continues in the Society of St. Pius X, and we have to expose it and we have to combat it. It's very dangerous to be exposing oneself continually to the new teaching of the society because it is sliding and sliding the faithful away from the truth more and more each day. We have to expose it, say clearly what the truth is, repeat the teaching of our fathers, and not compromise in these matters of the faith. God bless you all. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost.